Hey there, everybody, and welcome into the channel. Happy Monday. I hope you had a great weekend and that your week is off to a good start. My name is Jason. I'm here with you. You are here with me for Cold Rain's Weather World, where we've got all the weather and we've got all the tropical weather, and that's where we're going to start, out here in the tropical Atlantic, where we've got newly designated 92L which now has an 80% chance of developing. It's this little X right here, and we'll look at the uh, satellite and some models here on this, but it's moving into this area that's gradually becoming more and more favorable for development, and you can see that from the satellite imagery, we've got an 80% chance of this thing developing into our next tropical cyclone, a depression, and maybe a tropical storm, which would be Gabrielle. Gabrielle's been playing a very, very hard to get, but maybe the chase is over because looks like we're going to have Gabrielle within the next maybe seven days or so, and maybe even Hurricane Gabrielle. Some of the models are showing that, but outside of that, nothing going on. Gabrielle, or 97, 92L right now, rather, is the only game in town. Take a look here at the satellite imagery, and uh, pretty good depiction of this tropical wave. A lot of bright colors showing up, reds and blacks and whites. That means cloud tops are extending way up into the atmosphere where it's very, very cold, and the algorithm of the satellite designates those as bright colors. Don't really see a definable circulation or spin here in the low levels, which we're going to need to see if we're going to see development, but we do have nice curvature to this convective banding, and that will uh, continue most likely. That's an indication that things are becoming a little bit better organized with the storm itself. Around the rest of the horn here in the Atlantic, not a lot going on and imminently. There's another tropical wave, which we'll keep an eye on after our area of interest, which is right here. And then over to the northwest of that, we have another weak wave, another low pressure out here in the Atlantic. Look at this little area of spin right there around the North Carolina coast, around the sounds. And, and uh, what is that? Well, that's going to be a weather maker out for you guys in the mid-Atlantic over the next couple of days, a frontal zone back into the Caribbean and firing some showers and thunderstorms in Central America around Cuba. And then again, there's some uh, additional rain activity up here in the Northern Islands. But yeah, we're gonna have some rain around the mid-Atlantic. We're gonna take a little bit of a deeper dive into that here in just a few minutes. But right now we're gonna look at a couple of models that show what's going on out here in the Atlantic over the next two weeks. and. To be honest with you, not a whole lot other than would-be Gabrielle. So look what happens here. There it is, right down here in the Central Atlantic. We're going to start the GFS. This is the latest GFS run, the 6C run that's fully out right now. And there it goes. We get on in toward the weekend. It moves north of the islands, keeping everyone high and dry, and then develops it as we get on in toward late Sunday evening into maybe a low-end hurricane. And there we go. It looks uh, to recurve or curve, whatever you want to call it dead east as we get on out in toward the middle of next week. We'll see another little system spin up here in the Gulf, as the GFS likes to do, and another little system coming in off that trailing wave. Once again, though, curving out into the Atlantic north, and anything that develops from the Gulf or the southeast will head on out to sea or to the northeast because that is the steering pattern. The GFS has been trying to do this all summer long. Fool me once. Fool me twice, shame on somebody because you're not fooling us anymore, GFS. We're not expecting anything in the Gulf, even though we'll keep our eyes on all of that activity. We are near peak season, by the way. So that's what happens over the next couple of weeks with the GFS. No landfall strikes, no real threats of any type other than just a couple of fish storms, as we like to call them. European model is very, very similar there. It's got that little low pressure that's affecting North Carolina and eventually goes on to give us some wind and rain along the coastal areas and Piedmont areas of North Carolina, Virginia, and up into the mid-Atlantic. And there comes 92L across the ocean and gets on in toward the end of the week here. And it does the same with the GFS. It just keeps it rather weak, but eventually as we get later on into the weekend, it develops it into a weak hurricane, maybe even a category two storm as it heads toward Bermuda, misses the islands, but it gets a little farther west than the GFS does. So there's a little bit of a disagreement on the track. GFS turns it sooner. We'll keep watching that, see if the northern islands become game for a little bit of rain or wind over the course of the late weekend, early next week. But it heads toward Bermuda and at the last second curves it on out toward sea toward the middle of the Atlantic and doesn't bother anybody and it doesn't show any other development for the rest of the cycle over two weeks. That takes us through the end of September. There you go, folks. Not a lot going on in the Atlantic other than that first wave, but as you'll see in a minute, the second wave that's behind 92L does bear watching, and we will keep our eyes on it. Steering flow looks like this on the European ensembles as we go on out through 
late, basically late this week, early next week, you've got a ridge sitting out here, this high pressure ridge, and then of course, as we all know, flow around this ridge wants to steer things in this direction. And then we've got another trough kind of setting up shop here over the, I don't know, I'm stair-stepping it like that, over the eastern U.S. That will send anything that approaches the U.S. out toward that direction. So you see this little break here. That's what we're watching. All the models have that break. All the ensembles have that break, so we're fairly confident that whatever happens and whatever the storm does will shoot the gap and probably even sooner than uh, getting close to the United States, probably is going to the curve east of Bermuda. So over Sunday, that ridge really starts to break down. You can see that backing off and the tropical system will be right out in here at that time, right where my cursor is, and then it will scoot on off most likely to the north. But uh, that's the steering pattern. Then we've got a big trough setting up over the southeast portion of the country, really over the entire eastern portion of the country, probably going to keep us seasonal in terms of temperatures uh, as we go on out toward um, 216 hours. We're getting out toward day 8, 9, and 10, folks. That's Wednesday the 24th. As we roll this on further and further and further, still got that trough signal. Westerly is coming off the states. Not really a good landfall pattern here if you're expecting any sort of tropical landfall for the next basically two weeks. Um, that's pretty much the steering flow. Here's the ensembles, the European ensembles, and you can see the big signal for this initial 92L to develop. And then right behind that, look at that little trailing wave. We'll keep our eyes on over time. As we run this on out, this is at five days out already. Uh, we get on out here toward Sunday and then into Monday. Almost every model is curving that initial system on out to sea. The trailing wave comes in behind it, and uh, potentially maybe a few of the ensemble members take a lower route, but most, by and large, most everything for the next 10 days is going to curve everything out to sea. All right, so that's all the guidance is pretty much unanimous, and any threats that exist out in the Atlantic go out to sea and stay away uh, from the U.S., especially unless we can get something to develop in the Gulf, and that looks unlikely based on the ensemble guidance and the operational guidance. Do you have a few a few ensemble members individually taking something in toward the initial or, or the uh, northern islands, but again, you can't rely on two or three ensemble members. It just doesn't work like that, and we don't have a big signal for that, but a lot of stuff going on in terms of tropical waves. Most of them don't look to develop, but we're going to keep our eyes on it because we are near peak hurricane season, folks. That was just a few days ago, five days ago, and so we're at mid-September now. Now, I was going to do a longer video and have a weather IQ question and all of that stuff, but I'd forgotten that Cold Drizzle had his root canal appointment this morning, and that went very well. He made it through that. He's doing well, and um, hopefully we'll have no more problems with any of that, but I'm going to go ahead and jump on through the rest of the video. If you haven't yet subscribed, please subscribe and uh, let me know where you're commenting from. Definitely leave a comment, a prayer request. If there's anything I can pray about, let me know what it is. Put it in the comment section. Let me know where you're commenting from, what kind of weather you're seeing, any questions you have. I read all those comments. Give the video a like. And anything I can do to help you out, happy to do it. Air quality, though, not so great around Louisville, St. Louis, uh, Dallas, down here into Houston, even into Oregon, back toward Fresno and Los Angeles, seeing some issues with some air quality in some of these areas, especially over here where there's just been a lot of stagnation of air and pollutants and the air, ozone, and particles and things like that. So watch out for all of that. Surface map today, got a few system, little low pressures, a bunch of low pressures on the map. Just ignore all of that. Basically, you got a system here working through northwestern Mon or eastern Montana, dragging a cold front back and then another front extending through the Midwest and down in toward the Tennessee Valley it connects to a little bit of a low pressure system it's basically an upper level system and a trough behind that and then another system that's actually a legitimate storm system firing up here along the coast it'll be a low pressure likely to stay non-tropical but it's going to bring some rain and some wind and the tidewater of Virginia into the eastern section of the you know the coastal plain of North Carolina and up into the lower mid-Atlantic over the next couple of days and we'll look at that here in a second taking a look here at the actual wind map in the mid levels of the atmosphere it kind of shows you what's going on you can start here to see this a trough see you get a little trough ridge trough these are short wave troughs here and then a kind of a big high pressure uh, ridge here, an anticyclonic ridge, and so that's what this is showing you here within this pink line. You see that's this kind of jagged thing, and we'll draw a ridge there, and then an upper level cutoff flow that's responsible for creating a little surface flow along the coast in this area. So cooler weather along the east coast, warmer up for you all in the Great Lakes back toward Texas, and then cooler and 
unsettled. It's been showery up here along the northern tier of the country back out to the west as well. The monsoonal flow continues as we uh, go on out in time as well. So here's what happens. We get on in toward Monday to this afternoon and Tuesday, tomorrow. Look at this, a little low pressure spinning up along the coast. Remember the other day, European had this thing tracking kind of to the west, retrograding and setting up back here? Well, that's no longer the case. The GFS won this battle. And you better mark this timestamp on this video because you're not going to hear those words very, very often. But the GFS had this thing going up the coast. Now the European is corrected and much of the southeast, unfortunately, back west of the Piedmont stays pretty dry and we've needed the rain here but this will go up the coast and curve on off uh, in any event we've got more ridging coming off we get on here toward midweek another ridge building into the pacific northwest unfortunately dry for you all there's a trough and a low pressure system that'll work into the plains and bring some showery weather across the northern tier of the country over the course of the week as that slides east there's our big ridge kind of positively tilted like this i'm terrible at drawing sorry folks and then here's our upper level low here as we get on into wednesday just putting that on into motion you can see that upper level low start slowly working out of the pictures we get late week and then one across the center of the country slowly working in uh, to the east as we go out in time, but it's very, very slow to do so. Moist air around that and energy rotating around this will bring unsettled weather to the central plains into the Midwest and the Great Lakes as we go on through the week. But outside of that, not a lot in the way of rainfall across much of the country, maybe even a few severe thunderstorms with this as we go on out in time. Certainly this afternoon, look up into northern North Dakota and over into Wyoming from uh, basically Casper up into Rapid City, South Dakota, a little zone of potential severe weather, maybe a couple of uh, wind reports, hail reports in that area up here in northern North Dakota, not out of the question. And then over here in eastern North Carolina, southeast Virginia could see a tornado or two with spin associated with this low pressure and some high winds as well occasionally. Just a marginal risk here, so nothing big. But as we're going out through the afternoon, you can see that little low pressure spinning up here, bringing showers in northern North Dakota, a few showers and thunderstorms through uh, Wyoming into Montana and Idaho as well. Back through the south uh, southern plains, you'll see showers and thunderstorms. And of course, as this low pressure kind of gets its act together over the next couple of days overnight, plenty of rain, eastern North Carolina, eastern Virginia, up into Maryland um, and uh, Delaware, up into southern New Jersey even. That'll just spin around through the nighttime hours tonight. You'll wake up to rain tomorrow and much of eastern North Carolina, maybe even black back west, you're going to see some cloud cover associated with this. Whether you see a lot of rain, probably not going to see all that much in the way of rain back west, but certainly um, eastern half of North Carolina, Virginia. South Carolina looks to stay largely dry. And then tomorrow afternoon, we'll see showers and thunderstorms spin up here in the panhandle of Nebraska. Could see another bout of severe weather tomorrow not looking like a great big threat, widespread threat, but certainly showers, thunderstorms, wind, hail, things like that. See pop-up showers and thunderstorms all through the plains and back into the monsoonal, uh, get back here into the monsoonal flow. And look, there's a tropical system out here moving near the Baja, bringing some uh, tropical moisture in. Hopefully that doesn't hit anybody. It looks like it's going to move on off to the north and to the uh, and to the east, but plenty of moisture coming in here to the central plains. Bring some heavy rain potentially up into Nebraska and places like Kansas. You'll see those uh, showers and storms hold together through the course of the evening hours. And eventually as we get on in toward Wednesday morning, still raining up here in the basically in the lower mid-Atlantic and out here in the plains going to wake up to rain too Wednesday morning, Wednesday afternoon into the evening hours, finally seeing things dissipate out here, cranking back up in the central plains where that low, upper level low is just stationary. So it could be a rainy few days out here in the central plains, southern Florida, everybody else except for the mid-Atlantic here, just high and dry most for the most of the country. In some areas we need rain up here in the north northeast over in the um, western portion of the country down here in south texas I mean, plenty of rain we're not going to see much of it in the southeast is starting to get dry as well unfortunately here's the look closer look at that rainfall over the next couple of days this afternoon really cranking up here in central and uh, really eastern north carolina and it'll move into central rotate around move into central north carolina see some showers through greensboro probably back in toward Asheville too on a spotty basis as you go on back to the west, the more widespread rain is going to hang out from Danville up toward Richmond and on off to the east, just uh, south of D.C. through the early evening hours. That'll push into D.C. and Baltimore metro areas and back up in toward uh, southern New Jersey as we get on into the 
late night hours and plenty of rain falling here around New Bern and uh, Virginia Beach as we go on in through the overnight hours. And then tomorrow, probably showery for much of North Carolina, Virginia, and the rain gets a little heavier. Could see several inches of rain fall out of this in eastern North Carolina and eastern Virginia when all said, is said and done. And uh, we'll move it on out toward tomorrow night and wake up. Uh, we get on into Wednesday morning, plenty of rain again. So this is going to be with us for a few days. It's a slow mover finally by the end of Wednesday, and we get into overnight hours on Thursday. Thursday morning, it'll start to move out and get out of our hair. Also, it could bring some gusty winds as we take a look this afternoon. Winds gusting into the teens, maybe 20s. European wind maps are kind of overdone at times, but uh, getting on out toward the coast could see some gusts up into the 30s, even 40s as we go on out Monday into Tuesday. Tuesday morning, we'll stop it here. Gusty up through the Delmarva and the Tidewater in and then gusts back into Virginia and North Carolina, all the way back maybe to Greensboro and toward Roanoke. Could definitely see some gusts into the 20s, uh, but that'll kind of die down as we get on out in time. We get on in toward Wednesday morning, and we're seeing those gusts kind of die down. So that's what's going on with that little system. Just expect some breezy and windy conditions, mainly from the eastern Piedmont of Virginia and North Carolina back into the lower mid-Atlantic over the next two or three days. Going to see some rainfall in those areas. Everybody else is just going to be a little bit showery. Uh, rain, rain in nature uh, is what I'm trying to say there. This afternoon, highs in the 70s and 60s along from the 60s up here to the northern Maine area down to Piedmont of North Carolina looking really nice. Highs in the 70s and then 80s and 90s under that ridge back from South Texas all the way into the Great Lakes. 70s and 80s across the northern tier and a little bit cooler back here in the Pacific Northwest into the Intermountain West and Rocky Mountains. Tomorrow much the same regime going to be a little bit cooler under clouds and showers here in North Carolina, Virginia, parts of West Virginia, everybody else in the 70s around east until we get out here into the midsection of the country again. You guys are still cooking under that humidity and temperatures in the 80s and 90s back out west looking at temperatures in the 70s. 60s and 50s up in the Rocky Mountains. It's starting to get chilly out here, folks. Even some models have a little bit of snow out here as we get on down the line. It's getting out of that time of year. It's going to be warming up, though, out west as we go on through the week. Look at this. We get on in toward Wednesday, seeing those highs creep back into the mid and upper 80s and parts of the inner mountain west and up into the Pacific Northwest, San Joaquin Valley Desert Southwest, heating back up upper 90s, hundreds. And uh, that low pressure in the mid-levels of the atmosphere, just very, very, very slow to move toward the east and still finding 90s, upper 80s out ahead of that. And then 70s and 80s along the east coast. Northeast looking good. We get into Thursday, same regime. Friday, much the same as well. And uh, much more of the nation starting to feel a little bit cooler and some of those upper 90s are backing off here. But uh, Southeast is warming up. And that's your temperature profile over the next five days, your work week forecast, folks. And then just sort of wrapping up everything. Look at this. We got into... We got into G2 storm conditions for a little bit, and a lot of folks saw Aurora, uh, the north, saw those northern lights across the northern part of the country. That solar wind stream I was expecting came in a lot faster than what we were uh, anticipating, and it put us into G2, almost G3 storm conditions. That's strong when you get up into that range, but uh, we've been in G1 storm conditions. Maybe, 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 if we're a little bit lucky, we'll see some Aurora uh, you know, production here this evening, and maybe the northern lights will be visible across the northern tier. I'd go out and look, although it's not a very high chance today. Sunspot, still not looking at a lot of sunspot activity. we got this one kind of coming around the horn here. You see that one? Still not complex. We're not seeing any sun uh, solar flares coming off of that, but we'll watch it, see if what our next... Uh, our next weather maker is going to be from a space weather standpoint, but once this coronal hole stream goes by, things will get calmed down back to normal. Nothing going on on the volcano front or really the earthquake front. And uh, there you have it, folks. Nothing else going on. And that's it from a space and geological weather standpoint. That's all I got for you today. I will be back tomorrow. Things are back to normal. Have a full episode of Cold Rain's Weather World. And we'll watch that together tomorrow as it unfolds across the YouTube multiverse, okay? Hopefully all of the universes that have YouTube will be able to see it. In the meantime, uh, just kind of joking around a little bit here this morning, folks. It's been a one, you know, wonderful morning. Alex did a great job. My son, Alex Cold Drizzle, he had a great uh, dentist appointment. And certainly appreciate all the support and prayers that you guys give me. And as I said, we'll be back tomorrow with a full episode of Cold Rain's Weather World. We'll have a trivia question or an IQ question and do some other uh, kind of deep dive, maybe look in the longer range and things like that. So that's all I got for you today. Hope you have a wonderful afternoon and we'll see you back tomorrow. Take care, everybody.